Hello my lovable lovelies, welcome back to Crypto Comics. I am very excited for this video this weekend because I just got this package in the mail and it came all the way from the Philippines. It's from my buddy Carlo Carrasco who has a totally awesome blog at carlocarrasco.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen, carlocarrasco.com, where he writes about great comic books he's read. Uh, not too dissimilar to what we do right here on Crypto Comics. I think that's why we get along so well. And Carlos said he wanted to send me a package with some comic books he had. And I have, I have no clue what's in here, but we're going to find out, you know. What do we do? We take out the trusty Legends of the Lone Wolf Knife, which is still available on Indiegogo and Kickstarter. The Kickstarter campaign ends October 1st, which happens to be the same day that my Kickstarter campaign for Megawatt vs. the Vampires of the Sun starts. So, you still have a chance to get Legends of the Lone Wolf before it goes to print. You can either get it on Kickstarter with a totally awesome cover by Brad Ashworth, at Pencil for Life on Twitter. Or you can get the Indiegogo cover, which is by Bruce Pattenhog, who I'm working with on, a, on another project. So, we take our trusty Legends of the Lone Wolf knife and we just, we just slice into this. And let's see what Carlo... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh. 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 I'm seeing a duplicate, but I like that. I like duplicates. Ooh, the hard case card. Now, I'm not going to show my friend's mobile number here. Um, but you can check him out. Facebook.com forward slash writer Carlo Carrasco at Geeks and Villagers on Facebook and at Haven or Fantasy or just CarloCarrasco.com, as we said before. He's an author, a blogger, a copywriter, and a publisher. So, so there's the hard case trading card. Let's see, let's see. Prototype number one. I have this. We haven't, we haven't reviewed it yet, but we are going to. Ooh, Nightman number four. I don't have this. Man, people are just loving Malibu comics. They're loving the Ultraverse here 25 years after it came out. Ooh, Secret Weapons number one, I have this. This is this is one of those guys that I have not read uh, because everyone knows how I feel about Valiant. But, you know, so if the people demand it, I'll, I'll go through it. Ooh, I have this. Oh, yeah, this is good. Yeah, this is the Shattershot uh, went through all four of the X series annuals back in 1992. Mantra Spear of Destiny, I don't even know this. Wow, this I'm this I'm very interested in. This uh this could be fun. Whoa! Retro Vampirella. Let's just take a look in here. Black and white. Yeah. Oh, yummy, yummy. Jose Gonzalez. Hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness, Dazzler. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, hard case number five. It's a 40-page special. Do you know why it's a 40-page 40, 40 special, though? It's because they like to slip Rune in there, you know? Oh, yeah, look, he's got the, he's got the LGBT necklace that he, that he absolutely adores. He, he picked it up at Saturday Market in Portland, and uh, he's, he's really enjoyed wearing it ever since. I don't have this. Hard case number six. This guy looks creepy. James Hudnall wrote this. I do have this because it's part of Breakthrough, which we will go through at some point here on Crypto Comics. I will get to the Breakthrough, if you don't know. Breakthrough was uh, a crossover they did in Malibu, but unlike all of the cheap, crappy crossovers you get from the other major comic book companies, the Ultraverse planned their crossover a year in advance. So when they started launching all their titles, they already had a plan for this in place, which I think is super cool and really, really shows the regard the creators of the Ultraverse had for their fans. Ooh, I don't have this. This looks great, though. Solitaire Origin by George Perez? Really? Interesting. I am a big Solitaire fan, as my longtime watchers know. Hard Case versus Turf. Wow, this is really great. I really am digging it, Carlo. Thank you so much, brother. Oh, I'm excited to go through all these old hard case. I kind of liked hard case number one. Uh, the idea of a person with superpowers becoming a celebrity, I think that's very interesting. It's very modern. Uh, not too dissimilar to what Rob Liefeld 
uh, was doing in Youngblood in, in some later issues of the first series. Uh, but this is even even more so because this is a guy who actually became a movie star, and this whole this whole universe is set in California. That's one thing I really love about the Ultraverse is it's nice to see the West Coast represented finally in comic books. It doesn't happen very often. Filling it. Anniversary issue. Nice. Oh, this is really beautiful. Really stunning artwork. Oh, yeah. Wow. I don't know what to say. I'm just admiring this art. This is all really nice. can't believe that the Ultraverse is gone. I can't believe Malibu Comics was bought out by Marvel. What a shame. The secret behind Nightman revealed to his enemy... <laughs> a random issue of Catwoman. That's cool. I dig it. This was my favorite Catwoman design, actually. Oh, I like the modern Catwoman, I think, the best. Uh, but, yeah, this was really refreshing in the 90s to see this. This look. This guy just paints that corner of his face. It's Matt Hardy broken. This is so dorky. Does he think he's the Phantom of the Opera? What's... What's happening here? Hmm, let's just take some steaks with us to, you know, make sure that these dogs are uh, well behaved. Yeah, okay, okay, sorry. Got distracted by Catwoman and her sweet buns. Whoa, the solution. I, I, I have not gone through the solution yet. We haven't done that one. I have number one. I think I have number one in the, in the Malibu box, which is about to turn into a long box, I think. I have a short box with Malibu Comics, but it's looking like uh, that short box is uh, not gonna be able to contain this budding collection. Secret Weapons number two. This does nothing for me. This does nothing for me. This does something for me. But this does nothing for me. But we'll still probably go through it anyway, just for fun. Man, he's Nightman. I, I, I mocked Nightman. I mocked the uh, the review of Nightman number one. I thought it, I thought it was kind of stupid, though I dig, did dig uh, the Leatherface inspired tranny. I thought that was really cool. That uh, that dark tone that the Ultraverse had. Uh, I warmly welcome that. Uh, you know, you don't see a lot of that darkness in Marvel and DC. You can from time to time see it in DC, but Marvel, I don't think I can. I cannot recall any moment where Marvel was as dark as Ultraverse gets at times, and it's, it's nice. It makes the, the villains... Let's not look at Ravage 2099 yet. Uh, let's stick with the Ultraverse. It's better. Uh, it makes the villains more of a threat to see some of the things that they're engaging in. And I like it, you know? It's not something I could share with a 12... Well, maybe you could share it with a 12-year-old. I don't know. I was watching Quentin Tarantino movies when I was 12 and 13, so I'm sure this is fine. But you get older and you start to, you know, care more about, you know, the content that children get. But the content I was feeding myself was just <laughs> definitely more mature than I think my, my father <laughs> realized. He didn't know what I was doing when I went to stay at my grandmother's and we'd just go to the video store and I'd rent whatever movies I want, you know. Grandma didn't know. What grandma doesn't know doesn't hurt her. The Nightman, number 13. This, these covers are going somewhere. But every time I see Steve Englehart's name, I just get concerned because of that Nightman, number one. This Freaks cover I always thought looked really awesome. We're going to go through that. We're going through all this. Oh, there's the Exiles. We have not done the Exiles. Now, it's weird because the Exiles existed in the Ultraverse, and then they were imported into the Marvel Universe, and uh, and they're still around in different formations today. So I find that to be uh, kind of interesting. And uh, I look forward to maybe going through a few Exile books within one week's time. That might be nice. I don't know if it's really possible because we'd have to go through breakthrough and I mean there's so much in them in the Malibu universe that we haven't covered the the ultraverse if you will that we just haven't covered and uh, I want to get to all of it oh zero hour yeah I do I have all of zero hour I believe uh I need to read it I never read it believe it or not Ooh, I don't have this I think my cyber force collection 
I think I might end at number nine or Oh, this is volume two? Oh no, this is this is volume two. This is still back when uh Cyber Force was cool. I have this Cyber Force, I think it's volume maybe volume four. And it just is a massive departure from what I was used to, which is the awesome comic books that Mark Silvestri made in the 90s, and everything went wonky in the year 2000, I think. Elven number zero, I have this. Yes, this is a, a fantasy book that I'm not sure how it's going to relate to other Ultraverse titles. I'm very curious to find out, but I'm kind of waiting on this one until next year uh, because we have another comic book we want to launch after Megawatt vs. the Vampires of the Sun. I have a lot of comic books I'd like to share with you, a lot of stories I'd like to tell you. And one of them is a really awesome fantasy story that people who kind of know me behind the scenes, like my friends who I hang out with, guys like Slick Jimmy from Little Girl Lethal, uh, they're really excited for the fantasy story. It's called The Young Barbarians. And I'm kind of saving all my fantasy comics to go through when we launch Young Barbarians. So uh, you guys can kind of see what I'm into when it comes to that genre. Cyber Force number 29. Oh, man. Interesting. This is penciled by a few different people. Hmm. Michael Turney? Is that supposed to say Michael Turner? I'm kind of confused. Wow. So, there we go. Carlo really hooked it up here. No, we're not going to show the secret weapons. We can't do that to the people. I refuse. I don't want that image burned in your head. These are the images I want burned in your head here on Crypto Comics. Man, Carlo hooked it up, didn't he? If you, would, if you guys would, go find Carlo Carrasco and give him a thumbs up on something he's doing. Check out his blog. It's really good. Like his pages on Facebook. He, he's a good guy. Once again, let me tell you once again what those Facebook pages are. Facebook.com forward slash writer Carlo Carrasco. Geeks and Villagers, and Haven or Fantasy. And once again, you can see him at carlocarrasco.com. Here, let me put it up big on the screen. carlocarrasco.com. Thank you so much. And all of you, if you would, if you would really do me a, a big favor, I'd really appreciate it. If you gave this video a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it even more if you joined me on October 1st on kickstarter.com when Megawatt versus the Vampires of the Sun launches. We need all the help we can get to shoot this comic book through the roof, all the way to the moon. Your help in doing so really, really inspires me. It gives me the, it gives me the juice I need to keep going. It, it fills my tank and it, it makes me want to make more comic book reviews. Which, I mean, I'd, I'd love to do this every day of the week for you, but you know, sometimes real life gets in the way. But, I keep writing comic books for people. And so hopefully here, within the year, I can just do this for a living. I can write comic books in the day and make awesome reviews for you guys at night. And we can just uh, enjoy reviewing, reading, and creating entertainment together as one big happy family. One team. Call it CryptoGate. Anyway, that's it. Thanks, Carlo. And I will see all of you Crypto Knights again, right here on Crypto Comics.
Legends of the Lone Wolf. 80 page full color anthology. With your support, we will bring you a perfect bound 80 page book of the highest quality. Everyone involved has donated their time and talent and all the money will go to printing and shipping before any of the creators turn a profit. Unlike other anthology books, Legends of the Lone Wolf contains a 38 page feature length supernatural story. That's nearly twice the size of a regular comic book. This campaign is the only way to get the variant aged edition of Lone Wolf's number one. This highly unique version of our first issue will be printed on a stunning aged newsprint and features a cover by the one and the only Mutt Man. So don't sit on your hands, Wolf of Maniacs. You're gonna have to get out there and grab a copy for yourself. Ooh, yeah!